Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. I want to thank you for joining me for another installment of Hashtag 50 Gone by 2024. Now, today, what I'm doing is a combination of the 50 Gone by 2024, but also Petra of Petra's Happy Place had put out a uh, a video called my town so this is a little bit of both of those put together I take you on a walk with me so I just wanted to let you know what the walk was it is I take you up on the dike with me and take you walking through that and seeing some of the placards that they have along there and uh, yeah just a little bit of information about it I will tell you our little town has an addition every Friday night they have concerts in the Triangle Park um, by different bands, those kind of things. Not only that, but on Saturday nights down at that floating stage, there are concerts by different groups, anywhere from rock to bluegrass. You name it, you got a little bit of everything. Each weekend is a little different. And they do something every um, second week of the summer months and it is um, I believe they call it the side street they have a stage um, that is located near one of the art galleries here um, right next to the railroad tracks and it is um, basically a musical group that plays there and of course there's food that is provided by several of the restaurants in the area and just a lot of fun to go see so that's a little bit about that um, I do hope that you enjoy this video it, it's not all that long but uh, it was fun to walk the dike and talk with different people um, and it's a uh, it's a little bit of a meeting place sometimes for the teens um, to come up to that little gazebo where they sit and talk or maybe go down and swim in the river but the dike goes along the river. It was created by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, there were quite a bit of floods that were awful in this area. Destroyed a lot of homes, those kind of things. And of course, along the dike, most of the houses have two to three stories. And a little bit of information about that. I tell you about the different stories. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, just remember, get out there keep moving no matter what you're doing I hope this gives you a little bit of motivation to just keep moving that is the whole key purpose of this video so uh, yeah keep on moving guys hi guys it's Jane and I'm up on the dike this is the Susquehanna River and what you're looking at across the way is the Riverview Park. Now the Riverview Park, lots of people camp over there, but they bring their boats in. And as you can see, there's boats over there. I'm gonna zoom in. And then of course there's a couple of places back in there where that wooded area is, is a walking path that is half a mile around so you have to do two loops to get a mile but it's a very nice place to walk you know um, that's one of the places I go walk every once in a while now the dike supposedly goes up that way towards the university the main campus and then I'm going to turn you around, hope I don't get anybody too sick. And around this way, all the way to that bridge, and it is supposedly five miles. I don't think it's quite five miles, because when I've walked it all the way back and forth, um, I generally only get about three and a half miles. So I don't know whether my counter is really off or theirs is off, but you'll see right there, there's a little uh, pedestal and it has some history about this area because this area of the Susquehanna was used for logging. And at one point, 
I don't know if many of you know, but Pennsylvania is, uh, technically it means in the woods. Um, but at one point in history, Pennsylvania had logged every single tree they had in the state. There were no trees. So they began a campaign to plant trees and get those going back. And as you can see, there are a lot of trees now. And so now they do a little more controlled logging when they do logging here in Pennsylvania. But it's a nice walk. There's always a very beautiful breeze. Um, and you can look down at the water. And further down, there is a spot that is called the beach where you can actually go swimming in the Susquehanna, although I wouldn't really suggest it. Um, we do have a couple of drownings every year due to it. There is no lifeguard there. So, um, you know, a lot of teenagers come on their own and some of them have been drinking and it's, it's not a good thing. But I just thought I would show you the walk that I'm walking today and um, yeah. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Here is that placard I was telling you about that gives you a little bit of the history of the logging. And it talks about Boom Island. And Boom Island is right there. That is Boom Island. So, I did find a woman that was walking along and she did tell me, I asked her if she knew how long it was. She said she believes you have to walk it up and back down again for five miles but i figured that's a question i need to find out for sure so that'll be my next research stop not here that you stop at that gives you a little bit more information and it talks about lockport which is directly across the river that is what that area is called they tell you a little bit about lockport and about peter steps Okay, now I'm gonna read it to you. Do you see that peak across the river? And it's right there, that peak right there. It's known locally as Peter Steps. Legend has it that Peter Steps is named for Peter Grove, a Revolutionary War soldier who lived near here in the 1700s. Apparently, he was in the location scouting for Native Americans when several of them snuck up on him. His only escape was off the face of the cliff, so he and his horse leaped off, landing in the river and swimming to safety. Who wouldn't want to believe a story like that? The truth is not quite as exciting, and it does not involve the colorful Peter Grove. Peter McGinley, who used to hunt in the area, cut the first path to the top of the cliff, and that is the original name of Peter's Steps. Now, there is an area there back there. If you go back there, you will find evidence of Native Americans in this area. Um, you have to go pretty far to find it, but it's the interesting spot. Now, there is that path I talked about. And as you can see, there are some folks out there swimming. So yeah, that can add a little bit to it. There are some seats down there if you just want to sit and enjoy. But let's get down to the gazebo area. Inside the gazebo. As you can see, there's a couple of picnic tables and some seats. And directly across from it are a bunch of seats, which really is great when they're doing the regatta or when they're doing uh, fireworks. They shoot all the fireworks over here each year. So, yep. Now, you'll see on many of the poles, there are flags. And those flags are our local town heroes that have passed on, but they were in some sort of military branch. And so their families elect to have them displayed each year. Different people are chosen for it. And it goes quite a ways that way. 
and then it goes a little bit this way. And turn around now. Back up this way towards the bridge. And at the bridge, that is called the J Street Bridge. And they have the ability to put locks in there when the river is starting to flood and raise up so they can control the flow of water which is an interesting thing to see because generally that means this beach area is covered up. So that's why you see all the stone here is to also help with that when it happens. And it's only happened a couple of times since we've lived here, I think three or four, which isn't too bad. And that was part of the reason that they actually built the dike um, because the Army um, Engineer Corps of Engineers put this dike in because they'd had flood after flood of all these beautiful historic houses. Of course, that's now a real estate office. And that right there in the brown and white is a church. But there are many houses here that list three stories to four stories. Now, of course, the family lived on the first two floors um, during that time in in, in Victorian ancient times, but the maids and servants lived upstairs in the third floor and fourth floors. So when it started to flood, everybody would move up to the third and fourth floor with the uh, maids and scullery people, and uh, yeah, you just hoped you didn't get washed out with it. But um, that's a little bit about my town, Lock Haven, Pennsylvania. And um, I think that's going to be it for this walk. I may add a little bit a little bit later, but we'll see. All right, everybody, have a great day. Remember, be blessed. Now here you see we're up closer to the bridge, the J Street Bridge, where they can put the locks in. But you'll notice there's a path that goes down under the bridge and takes you to some seating, which is an area they call the amphitheater. Not that first little area, but back there is another stage area. They call that the floating stage, and during the summer, they have concerts there. And you'll see when people are out that a lot of the boaters bring their boats up around to watch. People will fill the stands to enjoy the music, enjoy company, a little bit of socialization. So yeah, that is it. I did find out that this is called the William Klinger Levy and Dyke uh, Nature Trail, is what they've called it. And apparently it is 4.7 miles long from that end all the way to the other end. And it supposedly takes you one hour and 46 minutes to walk it. Not so for me, it takes a lot longer for me. But I'm just getting back into the walking. I do know that in the past, Thomas and I would walk this up one side and down the other. And we'd be home in about an hour and 10 minutes. So yeah, I'm looking forward to gaining a little more time and getting back to it. But yep, that's my town. Here's the outside of that gazebo area. And here's the fun thing. It's a Pokemon stop. So you can fill up and get some, uh, some little fun balls and stuff like that. And sometimes you can get some quite few interesting characters. So yeah, a lot of people also fish along here. Um, I've been told it's decent fishing. I don't know. We never fished. So just rather interesting but like I said there are a lot of benches so you can stop sit and get your bearings again if you need to which with this bursitis I have to so yeah anyway that's it in a nutshell hope you enjoyed this little video that's put together in bits and pieces you can see those folks out there in the water on their boat A lot of people that go out in the boats, 
pontoons and you name it. So it's just a very nice relaxing day to sit and watch sometimes even. So there you have it. That's my town in a little bit of a uh, video that kind of covers that and does a little bit of walking. I hope that you guys, like I said, will just keep moving. It doesn't matter what you do. As long as you move, keep moving, folks. That's the important key to staying younger in life and also to stay healthy. Um, we as crocheters, knitters, sewers, we tend to do a lot of sitting. So get up and move every couple hours or every hour or so. Um, see how much it helps you with the way that you feel those kind of things and as always get out there enjoy this great universe that our creator has created for us and marvel at the wonders that we see see you guys again soon bye